After the events of Civil War, Natasha Romanoff, aka Black Widow, is on the run from the US government. She is trying to lay low as a fugitive, but that proves to be a little bit difficult when a dangerous conspiracy with ties to her past arises. As it turns out, The Red Room, a shady organization that kidnaps young girls and brainwashes them into being super assassins, still exists. Determined to shut the organization down once and for all, Natasha must confront the darker parts of her ledger, deal with her own history as a spy, and mend the broken relationships she left behind before she ever became an Avenger. Now, the biggest complaints I've heard about Black Widow is that it doesn't fit into the larger MCU narrative, it doesn't really tie into any future projects, it doesn't advance the larger MCU story forward, and it came out way too late since fans have been asking for a Black Widow movie for years now. But personally, I don't care about any of that. When I watch a movie, I just want said movie to be good. I don't really care if it fits into the larger scheme of things. That's why I really enjoy movies like Iron Man 3 or Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. They didn't have anything to do with setting up future MCU projects, and yet they are still good films in and of themselves. And I think Black Widow also perfectly fits into that category. I know most people don't care for when this movie is set in the MCU timeline, but I actually enjoyed watching a film that basically acts as a proper sequel to Civil War. After all, I always felt as though we as an audience never got the chance to see what it was like for half of the Avengers team to be fugitives in the years leading up to Infinity War. And Black Widow essentially answers that question while also exploring Natasha's mysterious history and the previously unmentioned surrogate sleeper cell family. So the movie is an espionage spy thriller that plays out like a cross between The Bourne Identity and Red Sparrow. Only, I don't remember anything that happened in Red Sparrow, and I'm not really a huge fan of The Bourne films. So, as far as spy thrillers are concerned, I would consider Black Widow to be a really damn good one, as I would much rather watch this movie over most other modern spy thrillers. Nothing here is as memorable as Captain America the Winter Soldier, but the action set pieces are still pretty solid. I particularly enjoyed an avalanche scene set in the middle of the second act, and just about everything set in the over-the-top finale. That being said, I must admit that the villains in this movie are okay at best. Taskmaster especially feels underwhelming and underutilized. His action scenes were okay, but I definitely expected more from him. And that's coming from someone who hasn't played Spider-Man PS4 because I don't actually own a PlayStation. I just thought the concept of someone who could mimic the fighting style of every Avenger wasn't utilized to its full potential. And then there's General Dracoff as the man responsible for creating the Red Room. While I admit his character was more intimidating than I thought it would be, he doesn't actually do much. Dracov does symbolize institutional violence against women, but since he spends most of his time off screen and doesn't factor into the movie until the finale, he feels much more like a function in this story than an actual character. Plus, how exactly he manages to create the next generation of Red Room assassins can come across as really silly, which feels odd compared to how grounded the rest of the movie is trying to be. But as with most Marvel films, the story isn't about the villains, it's about the heroes. And Natasha Romanoff is a compelling hero in this story. I admit I was never really a huge fan of Black Widow. I used to find it funny seeing her standing beside superpowered superhumans, but this film does a good job of turning a decent side character into a compelling main character. Scarlett Johansson clearly cares about Black Widow, and she really gets the chance to shine here. She's been playing the part for 10 years now, so it's nice to see how far she's come in evolving Natasha Romanoff's on-screen depiction. 
Johansson even serves as an executive producer on the film, since she's the one who brought director Kate Shortland onto the project. So the movie acts as a nice tribute, send-off, and swan song for Black Widow. We may not learn a whole lot of new intimate details about her personality, but I was engaged enough with what we did learn about her. After seeing the events that she experienced in this film and in her past, I actually had a better understanding of where her head was at during the events of Avengers Endgame, and why she made the decisions that she did. So I can honestly say that I will miss Black Widow's presence in future MCU projects. However, it's clear that Natasha's surrogate sister, Yelena, will be taking over that mantle. So it's a good thing that Florence Pugh is outstanding in that role. Yelena is easily the best part of this movie. She's funny, she's engaging, and she just kicks ass. She's so great that she basically takes over the narrative from Natasha. Which does suck since this is Natasha's movie, but the film essentially acts as Yelena's own origin story. But I'm glad to see that Marvel finally did right by Natasha's character, even if it did take them a while, and I hope they do right by Yelena's character by handling her future with care. The rest of the cast is good as well. David Harbour is a lot of fun as a scene-stealing, washed-out superhero known as the Red Guardian. And it's always great to see Rachel Weisz in anything. Together, their characters form the Sleeper Cell family that Natasha was forced to live with during her childhood as a young member of Dracov's Red Room. And considering the fact that we audience members had never even heard of these characters before, I was surprised to see how much I did end up caring for this fake family. The connections these characters had with one another felt real and tangible. There are some genuinely heartfelt moments with this family, so much so that even Dominic Toretto himself would be proud. I admit that the middle chunk of the film, where we spend the most time with Natasha's family, can lull a bit and feel a little plotting, but the movie kicks into high gear shortly afterwards. So Black Widow ended up being better than I thought it would be. Certain fans will inevitably complain about the film failing to justify its own existence, but this movie doesn't need to justify anything to anyone. Easter eggs and connections to future projects can be cool. I've been enjoying Loki just like everyone else has, but when I watch a movie, I just want the story to be good. And Black Widow is a good movie with an engaging story. It may not be one of the best MCU films, but it is still a solid movie altogether. I had such a fun time watching this in a packed theater filled with Marvel fans. I missed that experience so much. So much, in fact, that I may end up watching this movie again in theaters. So for that, I would likely give Black Widow three and three quarters out of five stars. Thanks for watching.